Hello everyone, today we are talking about the National Monument of Scotland. Today I've came up to the top of Calton Hill uh, to go through the not weird but quirky history of the National Monument which is this thing behind me right here. However, I've come up on a beautiful day. This is February 6th right now. It's in 8 degrees Celsius. There's not a cloud in the sky. There's not a breath of wind. The views are spectacular. I mean, if you actually just stand here and look about, and we'll probably come back up and do each thing individually, but you've got the National Monument. You can kind of see Arthur's seat in the distance there. And then you've got the Nelson Monument. And then as you turn around, you've got an incredible panorama of Edinburgh. And then you've got the, the observatory, the old observatory, and then back around to the National Monument. It's just spectacular. In fact, the sun is starting to set. And I don't know if you'll get it because of the sun. But that silhouette, that silhouette right there of the castle, the Balmoral, the sun setting, is that not just spectacular. That's not why we're here today. But before we get started, I want to give a massive shout out to Art and Olivia. Hello guys. Just wanted to say thank you for being some of the first to buy some of our Bruneford merchandise. You guys look fantastic. Thank you so much for supporting. If anyone else is interested in buying some of the merchandise, the link is in the description. So here you have it. This is the National Monument towering over the skyline of Edinburgh, however, completely unfinished. A little bit of background for you. In 1822, a load of wealthy noblemen, or whatever you want to call them in Edinburgh, uh, decided to start fundraising to commemorate... decided to start fundraising to commemorate the Scots who had died in the Napoleonic War. The Napoleonic War, in case you don't know, was from 1803 to 1815. So, not a massive amount of time later, in 1822, they decided to build this memorial to all the Scots who had died. The plan was to copy the Parthenon in ancient Greece. Because, you know, Edinburgh, Napoleonic War, the Parthenon. I mean, it just makes perfect sense. Actually, I think the real reason could be something to do with the fact that Edinburgh was getting the nickname the Athens of the North, or maybe by that point already had the nickname Athens of the North. So it fitted quite well with that sort of theme, if they were going for a theme of Edinburgh at the time. So if you were to look at a picture of the Parthenon, even though it's probably in a state of rubble and decay, you can see the similarities. And the idea, the idea really was to copy it completely, even in size. An exact copy in size. So the Parthenon must be big, because I'm guessing they wanted it to go all that space back there as well. I've never been. The cost was estimated at £42,000 in 1822. So, adjusting for inflation, and I've wrote this down because I had to. Adjusting for inflation, the whole thing would have cost, in today's money, Five million three hundred and seventy six thousand four hundred and seventy one pound. That's a lot of money. The idea came up in 1822. In 1826, with only a third of the money raised, and apparently Sir Walter Scott was one of the people trying to raise the money, they decided to start building, which was quite brave of them, with only a third of the money raised, but they started building it. Fortunately, by 1829, with only half the money raised, they had to stop. The well just dried up completely and there was no one else willing to put money into the monument even though work had started and it had started to be built and you can see it's, if you, even if you look up there like the top of that pillar just to the side of my head there it just stops in the middle of that pillar that's brilliant <laughs> so with only 12 columns built work was stopped and then just stood there. I mean, who's going to knock it down? I don't even know if at the time they would have had the equipment to knock it down. Anyway, back to the building of it so far. As I said, those stones were the biggest ever quarried in Scotland at the time. They were quarried 
at Craig Leith Quarry, which is about three miles from here, three miles west of here. It took 12 horses and 70 men to get them here. It's 1822, remember. I was just thinking as well, looking at it, it's kind of lucky that it, it's still overpowering and looking, you know what I mean? It's still quite impressive, even though it's completely unfinished. If you were to start building something like that nowadays, and there might be stuff under here, you know what I mean? They may have started the work under here, under my feet right now, I don't know, because I'm guessing it would have came back all this way. There's a beautiful big section for it, which is ideal. But nowadays, you know, you would do all the ground stuff first. You would map it out on the ground, you would do the ground stuff first. So there would be some sort of base level and then go vertical and start building upwards. They seem to have started at one side and went up and then wanted to come along. That seems strange. You know what I mean? You would think they would have mapped it all out first and then start to build up equally. But no, they've started at one side and gone to build back. I don't know if that was maybe just the way they did it then, but it seems odd. 1829. The money dries up, the work stops, and it gets the nickname a national, well, it becomes a national disgrace and eventually gets the nickname Edinburgh's disgrace. Even though, you know, it's still quite cool. And you can see that loads of people come and get their picture taken here. So many people want to come and get their picture taken. I mean, in the sunset, how spectacular is that? Other suggestions were made once work was abandoned. A little while later, but in 1907, a National Gallery was suggested in 1908, a Scotch Parliament, even though there wasn't a Scotch Parliament at the time, so I'm quite intrigued by that one. Today now it's just a spectacular piece of the Edinburgh skyline. Apparently as well what I've been able to find out is, although the exterior was going to look exactly like the Parthenon, the inside wasn't. The inside was going to look more like a church or a cathedral with catacombs underneath and everything as well, so like, again, I don't know if they started that. It seems odd that they started there. I feel like there must have been some... I want to know if there's something under here. Is there catacombs under here that were part of the design for that and have just been forgotten about? I want to know! Why did the money stop? Because, you know, I mean, a lot of effort had went into it. A lot of money had already been ploughed into it. Why did it all of a sudden stop? Well, it didn't all of a sudden stop. It just sort of dried up. By 1829, Edinburgh was growing at an incredible rate with the new town and everything. The, the city was growing outwards very quickly and a lot of money had started to be put into other developments, other projects, other large buildings, not just monuments whose, um, I suppose, purpose was unsure. You know what I mean? For a monument, a massive building as a monument, I'm sure at the time people were wanting homing, housing, hotels, businesses, you know what I mean? This would have not been high in the priority by that point. And plus, by 1829, the Napoleonic War had been over for a while. It finished in 1815. So what's that? 14 years later? People just had started to forget, unfortunately. Or not forget, but not care as much. Ain't that always the way? One thing I did find out as well, which I love, Glasgow Council, the city of Glasgow Council, offered to pay the rest of the money to finish it on the condition that the Glasgow Crest was prominently placed on it. And Edinburgh said no. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that Glasgow said, we'll pay for it, but you have to put our crest on it. I think that's brilliant. It's such... It feels proper Glaswegian banter there, you know what I mean? That sort of, ah, we'll do it, we'll do it, but you have to put my picture on it, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. I think that, I think that was really <laughs> such a good idea of them to do it. And I'm actually kind of really sad that they didn't. It would have joined the cities in a nice way, you know what I mean? It really would have. So there you have it. The National Monument. Edinburgh's disgrace, or actually, once Edinburgh declined the offer from Glasgow, it also got the name the Pride and Poverty. There you have the National Monument. And as I'm standing here, I'm just noticing there's doors. There's doors into it. There's a door into it there. 
and there's a door mirrored on the other side, so you can get in there. I think you all know me well enough by now to know that I want to go in there. I want to go in there so badly. <laughs> um, but there you have it guys, if you ever fancy coming up to the National Monument, it is a spectacular view. I'm on the back side of it, for lack of a better description. Look at that view. Look at that view of Arthur's seat right there. Is that not spectacular? And then we look round here. There's the fourth looking out towards Fife. If you happen to come on a clear day, on a beautiful day, and you're just wanting to wander, get some spectacular pictures. This is obviously a must. I mean, obviously now, it's kind of been like that for just under 200 years. Nothing's going to happen to it now. Not like that. So that's one of the things you can see when you come to the top of Cotton Hill. A massive, massive big shout out to LTP. Thank you for watching last week's video and commenting. And thank you for becoming a new subscriber. If you've enjoyed that, guys, as always, please remember, like, share comment um, and if you haven't already please subscribe I've decided I have a new dream 10,000 10, subscribers is my new life goal um, we'll see there you have it guys the National Monument Edinburgh's disgrace just one of the many I think we'll leave it there guys till next time bye humans